Hi there, I'm back with your information part two. For those of you who haven't watched part one, please do so because this is the continuation on selective reabsorption. Just to refresh, urine formation starts with ultrafiltration at the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule to produce a glomerular filtrate. Then, selective reabsorption of the glomerular filtrate starts at the proximal convoluted tubule to form filtrate. So today, I'm going to continue on the second stage of selective reabsorption, where we are going to find out what happens to the filtrate at the loop of Henle and how urine finally forms. So come, let's move along. The loop of Henle is located in the medulla of the kidney. It can be divided into three parts. The first part is the descending lymph. It is permeable to water but impermeable to salt. This means that the water in the filtrate that flows along the descending limb can diffuse out into the vasa recta but the salt cannot. On the other side, we have the ascending limbs. There is the thin ascending limb and the thick ascending limb. The thin ascending limb is permeable to salt but impermeable to water, meaning that the salt in the filtrate can diffuse into the vasa recta but the water cannot. However, the thick ascending limb is impermeable to both salt and water. Now that we know the structure and characteristics of the loop of Henle, let's move on to discuss the selective reabsorption process at the loop of Henle. The filtrate will travel down the descending limb of the loop of Henle. The filtrate will contain urea, water and sodium ion. Since selective reabsorption involves water, and sodium ions, I will remove urea from our discussion for now. Now the loop of Henle enters the medulla of the kidney. The medulla is hyperosmotic. This means that the cells of the medulla have the highest concentration of sodium ions, making them have extremely high osmotic concentration. In comparison, the filtrate has low osmotic concentration. So, the water molecules in the filtrate will diffuse by osmosis to the vasa recta. This is possible because the descending limb is permeable to water. However, remember, the descending limb is impermeable to sodium chloride. Therefore, the sodium ions will remain in the descending limb of the loop of Henle. The osmotic concentration of the filtrate will be highest at the bottom tip of the loop of Henle. Now, if we do not consume enough water, these sodium ions will not dissolve. Instead, they will solidify to form kidney stones. So that is why it is always necessary to remain hydrated to prevent formation of kidney stones, which can lead to kidney damage. The will continue to flow up the thin ascending limb. And here the sodium ions will diffuse into the interstitial space that is at the tissues of the medulla. This is possible because the thin ascending limb is permeable to sodium chloride but impermeable to water. So whatever water that is still present in the filtrate will remain in the loop of Henle. The filtrate then continues to flow up the thick ascending limb. Remember that the thick ascending limb is impermeable to both water and salt. However, the thick ascending limb can pump 
sodium actively into the interstitial space. So the accumulation of the sodium ions by the ascending limbs is what makes medulla hyperosmotic. Selective reabsorption at the loop of Henle follows the countercurrent mechanism. Countercurrent is referring to the flow of the filtrate in opposite directions. The filtrate in the descending limb flows downwards, while the filtrate in the ascending limb flows upwards. When the filtrate flows in opposite direction, it causes a major effect in the medulla. To explain that, let me use the example of the filtrate flowing upwards in the ascending limb. When the filtrate flows upwards in the ascending limb, the filtrate actually loses salt. This is because the thin ascending limb is permeable to sodium and the thick ascending limb, although impermeable to sodium, it can still use ATP to actively pump sodium out. So eventually, the accumulation of the sodium ions in the medulla makes the medulla hyperosmotic. What happens here at the ascending limb is going to cause a major effect to what is going to happen in the descending limb. Since the medulla is hyperosmotic, when the filtrate flows downwards into the descending limb, the filtrate loses water. Water will diffuse out by osmosis into the vasa recta. So you can see Reabsorption of water is made possible because of the diffusion of salt in the ascending limb. This is the benefit of the countercurrent mechanism. Besides making the medulla hyperosmotic, it ensures optimal reabsorption of water into the vasa recta so that when the urine is finally formed, the urine will contain minimum amounts of water. The urine produced will be concentrated. We have now completed the explanation for selective reabsorption. Let's move on to secretion. Secretion is the final stage of urine formation. The peritubular capillaries will be transporting waste substances such as urea, drugs or even toxins. These waste substances will be actively transported into the distal convoluted tubule to dissolve together with the filtrate. The filtrate then flows into the collecting duct where the waste will be excreted along with the urine. Let's summarize the process of urine formation. The first step is ultrafiltration that occurs at the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. Ultrafiltration produces a glomerular filtrate that contains useful substances such as water, salt, glucose and amino acid, as well as waste substance such as urea. The glomerular filtrate then flows into the proximal convoluted tubule where selective reabsorption occurs. At the proximal convoluted tubule, 100% of glucose and 100% of amino acids are reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. So the fluid that flows out of the proximal convoluted tubule, which we call the filtrate, will contain water, salt and urea. As the filtrate flows down the descending limb of the loop of Henle, water will be reabsorbed into the vasa recta. And as the filtrate flows up along the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, 
sodium will diffuse into the medulla of the kidney. The filtrate then continues to flow into the distal convoluted tubule where secretion occurs and the peritubular capillaries now will secrete waste such as urea, drugs or toxins into the distal convoluted tubule. The filtrate together with the waste substances will empty into the collecting duct and form urine. The urine then exits the kidney via the ureter and will accumulate in the bladder to be excreted later. So now you know the importance of the kidney and naturally the general advice in biology, take care of your Bye-bye.